Hey guys, I'm Tristan from TA Pedals. We wanted to introduce a new segment into our weekly lineup. Stefan and I sat down a few days ago when we were talking about new content that we could produce that would be interesting and fun. One of the things we came up with was maybe uh, talking a little bit about our history and how we got started and the origination of our circuits and what they're based on and things like that. And so today uh, I want to talk about our uh, Vampire Squid Fuzz and kind of where that came from. So I guess to start at the beginning, when I first approached Stefan about uh, making guitar pedals, I told him that I was really having trouble uh, getting the graphic design part of things down. And he was like, well, hey, I'm a graphic designer. I can probably help you out with that. Let's try to come up with something. And so, you know, that was really helpful. And we decided to come up with making pedal PCB clones and then reselling them. We decided that we were going to do a clone of the uh, Earthquaker Devices Life pedal. The pedal PCB version is called the Parentheses Fuzz. The regular Parentheses Fuzz is pretty big. It's cool. This is the one that I made for myself. Uh, it no longer works, unfortunately. Um, it's a pretty big circuit board, but there's not a lot on there. It's not packed or anything. That's what it looks like. And it has, uh, this version has three different switches. It has one for the boost, octave, and distortion, and then controls for all of that, plus a uh, three-way toggle switch uh, for different clipping options. And you can see the different clipping diodes here, and uh, there's a set for the octave uh, portion of the circuit there. And this unfortunately no longer works for me. I did something wrong. And uh, in the beginning, the octave wouldn't turn on without the, the distortion being active uh, simultaneously. And the boost didn't work at all. I know it's something that I did. And um, it, I went back through and traced it. And I just couldn't get it to work. And now it doesn't work at all. Uh, but that's okay. I'm actually in the process of making myself a new one. Because it's a great circuit. If you want to make good quality clones go visit pedal pcb they have so like a great selection really high quality circuit boards that's how i got started and so i had the circuit part of it down i wanted to do a clone of the earthquaker devices life pedal because it's an awesome pedal it's kind of expensive we saw a gap in the market essentially and i was like well if we can provide people with a less expensive alternative and still give them the great sound of the Earthquaker Devices Life pedal, maybe we can fill a gap in the market, make a few dollars, you know, selling the clones. That would give us enough money to fund our future projects. And so that's kind of what we did. And I don't have one of the original pedals that we made. Uh, we called it the Alien Life pedal because it has an alien on it. I'll put a picture of it uh, right here. And that's what it looked like. And so we probably made five or six of those. And every time that we completed a batch, they were sold out uh, almost immediately. So Stefan and I uh, saw an opportunity and we were thinking to ourselves, well, if these go this fast, there must be a demand for this kind of thing in the market. We could feel that demand and maybe we could come up with our own designs uh, based around these circuits and, you know, whatever. Uh, we decided to essentially extract a portion of the the live pedal, which is the distortion circuit right here. You can see the op amp. You can see the 30 PF ceramic cap. That's really similar to what we did with the uh, Vampire Squid. So essentially what happened was we, we mapped out a layout on Stripboard, and we started making the Vampire Squid uh, on stripboard. And I had to figure out a way to incorporate the toggle switch with the diode selection, which wasn't wasn't difficult at all. But we found that the stripboard version just wasn't very stable. It's probably due to the fact that the stripboard that I was using wasn't really that great. I did everything I knew to do using flux to make sure that the solder adhered to the the copper tracks and I did all of that. I did a lot of experimentation to try to make it stable. It just didn't work like we wanted it to. This is what that version looks like. We still have a few of these. We're kind of hanging on to them for, you know, our history's sake, I guess. But that's what that looked like. It's essentially the same circuit. 
uh, that's in that parentheses fuzz. But it's on stripboard. It's kind of, you know, more boutique, I guess, but also not very good quality. You can even see right here, I made a small board with a uh, resistor on it to connect the LED. I mean, it works, but it's not ideal. It's not a stable product, but these are still pretty cool. After we realized kind of where we were at with the strip board and realized that that's not the quality of product that we want to put out, we want something that we can stand behind and really believe in, Stefan and I uh, started developing the printed circuit board version. And Stefan's usually in charge of all of that. I kind of just double check over everything. So he's like the mastermind that lays everything out. We came up with a version that was pretty good. It only had one problem. Uh, when we plugged it in, it didn't work. And so we went through and traced the circuit and tried to figure out where it was going wrong. We figured out that uh, the transistor legs, uh, two and three specifically, were flipped. And we had socketed the transistor just in case something like that happened because um, I knew from previous experience that sometimes transistor orientation or pinout can be um, a common cause for a circuit not working. And so we flipped legs two and three, it fired right up, it sounded great. And so we made another version of that same circuit board with some minor changes and we just flipped the transistor, the traces that were going to legs two and three of the transistor, and we came up with this. This is our current board, and we are currently working on uh, a version two, but you can see right in the middle, that's where the uh, IC goes. You have resistors here and here, and then you have your uh, diodes here, and this is where the, the toggle uh, connects. So you can select between uh, silicon, germanium, or op-amp clipping. That's what we're currently working with. When it's all populated, it looks like this. So if you compare the parentheses fuzz layout with what we have here, you can see it's different. This is extracted from this. It wasn't actually until later when we started doing research that we realized that the uh, distortion section of the uh, life pedal by Earthquaker Devices is based on a rat. Little did I know one of my favorite distortion pedals was a rat um, that had been, you know, modified essentially. So whenever I talk about the vampire squid, I always say that it's a possum because it's like a rat's third cousin. That's kind of where we're at with the current version. This is what it looks like inside of a pedal. It's still uh, wired. Uh, it doesn't have any PCB uh, mount pots or jacks or anything like that. Uh, we're working on that for version 2, and it's going to make it even more stable. That's kind of how the Vampire Squid came to be. We wanted to make a cool distortion pedal with a high-cut filter on it and clipping options. And that's what we did. We were able to achieve it, take it from a, a concept into a, a, a bad prototype, into a good prototype, and then made it a, a fully functioning, stable product. And um, it's been a pretty wild ride. We've sold probably 22 Vampire Squid pedals, so thank you to everyone who's purchased one of those. We still have a few in stock. I think we have seven more to sell and then we're actually going to be done with version 1. We're going to move on to version 2. Version 2 is going to have 8 clipping options using a rotary switch, which is going to be really cool, like this. It's going to have one of these doodads in it. It has 8 different uh, connections on it, so we can have 8 different clipping options, so you can get 8 flavors of distortion and fuzz out of one pedal, and we are super excited about that. Uh, it'll probably come out in the middle of next year, if I had to guess. If you have any questions about the development of the Vampire Squid or any of our other pedals, please feel free to send us an email at tapedals at gmail.com or leave a comment on this video. Check us out on Instagram. We are pretty active uh, on there, and so it's super easy to get a hold of us. And thank you for watching, and I will talk to you next time.